And we are back once again with Slime Isekai Memories. Today we are doing something slightly different. We are here on chapter 13 because I don't know when they added this, but apparently during the first one year anniversary, or at least in some random celebration, they added a secret story slash secret cutscenes to some of these stages. So basically, if you just go to all stage 11 for beginner, normal, and expert, you can see this special story slash cutscenes. So we are going to try and do this, but you kind of have to do a few special things to see them. It can't be as easy as just beating it. So I'm pretty sure for this one, you have to lose with a specific team or not a specific team, but just lose. So let's see. All right. Well, this is basically what we got. I'm pretty sure I can just remove that to make him extra weak. And there we go. Now we just have her die and we'll be fine. I'm pretty sure this isn't relevant to the scene, so I'm just gonna skip this. Alright. I, I just wonder, what is this Milan working with? She's working with a chocolate sword. Man, I have not used this girl. Let's just attack with one. Let's not drag this out more than it needs to. Girl's getting smoked. And she's dead. Yep. Nope. Don't want to be using crystals for this. Hidden episode concept and story by Fuse. Number one. Where am I? What happened? There's a wind blowing, and around me is an empty plain. Answer! Your present location is the outskirts of the Kingdom of Ingressia. You have finally managed to regenerate after your defeat by the individual Hinata Sakaguchi. I think that's how it is. But damn, I, I thought he really died, like, if he were to get hit seven times. But apparently, Rimaru was able to regenerate from that. I can't even say, like, would that really happen in the main series? This is literally the main writer of the series putting his own spin on this original story. So it's just so weird to say, like, this would never happen in the main series because this is not the main writer, but it literally is. So it means plot armor for Rimaru is through the roof. Oh, great sage. Is that you? Just hearing your voice feels nostalgic somehow. Oh, never mind that for now. Wait, what? I lost to Hinata. That's right. She was saying that she had a problem with our town. You said, finally. Does that mean it's been a long time? Affirmative. Three years has passed before your arrival. Three whole years? In a panic, I invoked teleport and went straight to Tempest. The scene before me, it was nightmarish reality, where humans were using the monsters as slaves. To be honest, I expected worse. Like, I expected Tempest not even to be there. This is probably a better outcome than you would have, like, possibly thought. Like, I mean, it's slavery, but hey, at least not everyone is dead. So it means there's a chance for characters to still be alive. 
How could this happen? I just stood there in a daze. Then my magic sense detected a familiar presence. Great Rimuru, you're all right. Yeah, I wonder how are they gonna see this? Like, were they gonna think that Rimuru died, or are they gonna think Great Rimuru abandoned them? I can't believe I'm calling him Great Rimuru. Sometimes I just forget on just saying him Rimuru or Great Rimuru. But yeah, I wonder how their feelings are going to be for him. Because they're seeing that he's alright right now. Soy, you're okay? Too? You're okay too. I feel like that comma is in the wrong place. Like, I don't know. You're okay? Too? Like, it, sh it shouldn't be there, I feel like. It should just be like, you're okay too? Yes, coward that I am, I have survived this long, only to live with my everlasting shame. Not only was I unable to save Benimaru or Princess Shuna, but I couldn't even aid our other companions. What? It felt like blood was draining out of my entire body. Benimaru and Shuna were dead? It couldn't be true. I wanted to deny it, but the words couldn't come out. Three years was too long. It was no wonder things had gone wrong. In any case, it's dangerous here. For now, we should get to a safe place. Nah, I feel like Rimuru is gonna be mad. Like, he's gonna wanna kill these guys. And I feel like at least the Falmoth Force still around here, like, shouldn't be able to stand up to Rimuru. Like, even if he did lose a bunch of his guys, like, unless they have the barrier still up, but I would imagine they took that down. As soon as the war was over. The safe place he was talking about turned out to be the Lizardman's territory. Gabriel came out to meet us. Okay, no, so they did actually retreat. Great Rimuru! Oh, thank goodness you're alright! When he saw me, Gabriel burst into tears. Instead of Gabriel, it was the chieftain of the lizard men, Abru, who acted as our guide. Instead of Gabriel, it was the chieftain of the lizard men, Abru, who acted as our guide. Gabriel is so depressed because I'm guessing he probably lost his men that usually it would be him showing us around, acting as the tour guide, but. He's just, I guess, just taken up by sadness and depression. He took us to the council room. When they heard about my return, everyone who was still alive had come running. Just as Gabriel and his people had stayed safe in the caves, those who happened to be away from the village had luckily escaped the danger. Some of my followers, including Soi and Saka, the high orcs who had been building up our roadways. The hobgoblins who had been out patrolling or hunting. The messengers and merchants who had gone to Eurizania. And the three dryad sisters led by Traini. But even so, our numbers were far too few. In the gloomy atmosphere, I heard what happened in Tempest from my friends who had gathered there. The town is under the influence of the Holy Field, so it's impossible to rescue anyone. Okay, so it means they do still have the barrier up. 
Like, it's weird. I guess they want to treat it as a slave camp? Concentration camp? You guys already won, and I guess killed most of the people resisting. But I guess just to keep that, like, control tight, they keep the field up and keep all the monsters in it. Only those of us who were outside the barrier were able to make our escape somehow. We gathered all the survivors once to try and mount an all-out attack, but... We couldn't get a foothold against the powerful soldiers of Falma and the even more troublesome Holy Knights. Hmm. Yeah, because in the main story, the Holy Knights, aside from Hinata, weren't there to help. I'm guessing their support came later? When Falmoth requested? Because in the main story, somebody ratted on Rimaru. And so that's who the Holy Knights sent Hinata to take on. Because they knew Rimaru would be actual trouble. But I guess eventually the Holy Knights is like, Okay, Falma, since, since you want assistance from us and since the monsters are kind of ripping your people to shreds, we'll send a few of the Holy Knights. I see. The kingdom of Falmoth must have attacked while I was battling Hinata. And then, you all... No matter how sorry I am, I can never be sorry enough. If I'd come back in time, we could have gone through this without losing everyone. No. Even before that, if I hadn't lost to Hinata, this whole disaster could have been prevented. It's all because I was so weak. In the meantime, the forces of Demon Lord Clayman began to invade the Gerar Forest. Damn, it keeps getting worse! And now they're using the decaying ancient ruins as a base and seem to be in a stare-off with the Kingdom of Falmoth. Falmoth and Clayman had entered into a secret agreement which they both benefited from. And since Tempest was in a strategic point, Clayman's evil magic had made the monsters, my friends, into slaves. Soy and the others didn't even have the strength for a counterattack, which is why they relied on Abriyu to gather like this. As members of the Jarar Forest Alliance, the Lizardmen had been lucky enough to escape the harm themselves. Those who had barely managed to escape were only still safe thanks to their protection. And that wasn't all. It turns out Vesta had returned to the Dwarven Kingdom and lodged a complaint with King Gazelle about the situation at the time. This is all the consequences of my foolish judgment. I never imagined that Falmoth would take action so swiftly. Regretting his mistakes, Gazelle swiftly set out to deal with the situation. Aw, oh, don't tell me he got murdered too. Like, Gazelle's actually a pretty cool guy. And so, if he somehow died... But the Kingdom of Falma paid no attention to the objections from the Dwarven Kingdom. As a result, the relations between the two countries became extremely chilly, but... Nevertheless, with Demon Lord Clayman's power on the rise, they stopped short of outright hostilities leading to the current situation. King Gazelle concluded that he didn't have sufficient cause to go to war. Of course, he couldn't afford to drag his own country into danger when he hadn't heard a word from me, his opposite number in Tempest. His opposite number in Tempest? 
I don't know what that means. Man, Gazelle is actually quite a homie. Like, I didn't know how deep the relationship was, but it's like, he tried at the very least. Of course, overall, he has to protect his people, but of course, he can't go to war and risk, like, everyone's lives just for the monsters of Tempest. In other words, it was all my fault. What are we going to do now? Well, I mean, the situation did get better. Rimaru is here, so... But they are still in a shitty situation. Rimaru, we lizardmen owe you a debt that we can never repay. We'd like to help you as much as we can, in whatever way we can. I myself stand ready to personally follow any commands you might have for me. I can't believe how underutilized the lizard men are, aside from Gabriel's squad. Like, if he is really this devoted to Rimaru, but yet we do not see the lizard men chieftain and the other lizard men help out at, at all with Tempest. Like, I guess they just keep it very casual in the main series, to where it's like they only do trade routes and other stuff like that. But still, that's kind of neat to know that they're super lifelong dedicated to Tempest. Soy and the others questioned me, gazing at me with pleading in their eyes. But even I didn't know what we ought to do. I was just an ordinary salaryman, doing my best impression of a king while they all helped me, bumbling along as well as I could. That's why I failed, and everything turned into such a disaster. Please, do try to be gentle with yourself. This all happened three years ago for us, but you've only just heard about all of this. It's still new to you. When she said that to me, I realized, unlike me, Soy and the others have been making the best of this bitter reality all along. It must have been hard to accept. They must have been cursing their own powerlessness. But as painful as it was, when faced with inescapable reality, they'd put a good face on it and done their best. They had the time for that. But as for me, were Benimaru and Shuna really killed? Isn't there anyone else who might have been captured surviving out there? I tried asking that as a way of clinging on to some faint glimmer of hope, but the answer was brutal. I'm so sorry. I did hear from Vesta that the Kaijin and the other dwarves have been enslaved, but... Wait. I did hear from Vesta that Kaijin and the other dwarves have been enslaved, but... Okay, I thought Vesta got captured too. I was like, how did he make it to like gazelle and then somehow get captured as well but i'm glad that he's at least free the kaijin are there that can be saved what about hakaru and shion and karob and who else is any other name character i don't think there's any oh gabata as well regard ah damn i can't remember what's his son's name that's like five other characters we still don't know what happened to. We were unable to confirm the survival of anyone who was deemed a monster. Maybe there's still some hope. In some ways, they were enslaved. But the looks on Soy and the others' faces made it clear that prospect was dim. Could you leave me alone for a little while, please? I like to gather my thoughts. 
understood. I was shown to a private room where I could try and face up to this nightmarish reality. There's no point in weeping and wailing now over how this could have happened. After all, what we've lost, we can never get back again. No, that's all wrong. I can't give up. Until I see the proof with my own eyes and hear it with my own ears, I have to believe that all my friends are still alive. Yeah, that's my job as the leader of the Kingdom of Monsters, isn't it? But, just for now, I think I can let myself whine and cry. Just a little. I don't care if it's a demon or anybody at all. Somebody, please help me. I mumbled those words without thinking, but I had to put my tears behind me and consider what to do next. Just as I thought, I sensed a strange presence. Aha! Ahahaha! That familiar presence is I, your great ally. I heard that you were in need of aid, so I rushed to your side. Okay, so in this timeline, Diablo shouldn't be under Rimaru as a subordinate. So I feel like that makes the little side stories canon to this. Now, I have never posted the side story. I may do that later on. In one of the little side stories, it was the interview with a demon. I think it was interview with the progenitor demon. So, in that interview, basically at some point in time, Diablo got interested in Rimaru because he was just quite unique of a person. I, I don't remember if it's because, like, Rimaru was strong, he just liked Rimaru's personality, or something else. But that basically showed that Diablo was kind of watching Rimaru for all the years he arrived in this world. Or at least most of them. So that's interesting that they made it canon and at least this event. Because I remember there was some contradicting things in that story. But in here it just seems completely canon. Considering he's saying the familiar presence is I, your great ally. He's probably going to be like, who, who are you? And stuff like that. But yeah, that's just very interesting. Since Fuse is the one that created that story and now created this one as well. If there is anything you would have me do, you only have to say the word. Who is that? I can tell that it's a demon, but I don't remember summoning one. Yeah, I did call out for help, but I didn't draw a magic circle. Or perform a summoning ceremony. Anyway, only a fool would do something as risky as employing a demon without negotiating what he'd pay in return. I understood all of that. And yet... Interesting. In that case, make yourself useful. Like, damn... Like, you can hear the coldness in Rimaru's line. It's like, when, when he first summoned Diablo, it's like... It, it was kind of a funny scene because Rimaru was falling asleep and trying to stay awake. But in this scene, he just says it with a cold demeanor. Like, he just doesn't care. Or like, he's very skeptical. Which is not how Rimaru usually grows. Please, tell me what you think I can do, or have to do, to escape this awful situation. I bet he's gonna be like, slaughter the Falmoth army. 
or slaughter Clayman's army. Something like that. Like, get stronger by eating creatures and other stuff. So you can have the power to destroy your enemies. Or I can destroy your enemies. Just give me the command. I didn't think he'd have an answer. But I tried asking him anyway. When I did, the demon smiled enthusiastically. For you, it's a simple matter. Listen well to the voices of the souls that adoringly follow you. And you can deduce the answer yourself. Oh yeah. His subordinates are going to want revenge. And so they're going to want to kill the enemies that slaughtered their friends. What? I didn't understand what he was trying to say. But there was something about his words that stuck with me. Notice. Confirmed. Master, the souls of the monsters you named have gathered in order to be guided by you. Before I even had time to ask what that meant, Great Sage asked me a question. Question. Will you absorb the fury of the monsters linked to the lineage of those souls and evolve into a true demon lord? Yes or no? Wait. Question. Will you absorb the fury of the monsters linked to the lineage of these souls and evolve into a true demon lord? Okay, I'm a little confused. So wait, is it the fury of the monsters currently living? Or is it the fury of the monsters that were killed? Because I can kind of believe that Rimaru probably gathered... I can't say 10,000 monsters, but at least close to 10,000 monsters for Tempest. Like women, children, and men monsters. I can believe if most of them died and like the creatures that uh, Rimaru has killed. Well, I don't actually know. You have to be a sentient soul to be registered for like the Harvest Festival and all of that. So I don't know. It was probably like the only thing I can imagine here. Is that when Falmoth and Tempest were fighting, the loss of the soldiers probably helped round out the total of 10,000 souls, like, on Falmoth's side. And then probably, like, the close to 10,000 people that were in Tempest, it was women and children that were there with the men that were probably soldiers. And so, just that's a lot of souls that could be converted into a demon lord. Because I'm guessing they want to be guided by Rimaru into the afterlife. Or just have, or just let Rimaru use them as power so he can get revenge for them. The moment I heard it, I understood. I saw them for myself. The final memories of Benimaru, Shuna, Shion, all of my beloved friends, and I understood. There was no hope left anymore. I mean, he still needs to rescue his other friends. Like the... the dwarves. Also... My man didn't mention Hakaru, or Karob, or Gabata, or Rigard. So there is still hope to save some people if they're not dead. He didn't add that name into the memories of the dead. Benny Maru's friendship, Shuna's warmth, and Shion's laughter. Uh, 
Gobuta's playfulness, Hakaru's trustworthiness, Korob's magn magnanimity? I'm just guessing that's how that is. But alright, I guess they did die. Man, I was actually having some hope that he didn't mention their names, but now that he did, I guess they're dead. Oh yeah, those two too. Yep, him too. Rigard, Rigor, and all the precious friends who had faithfully followed me. They were gone. And the only thing left for me to do was get revenge on their behalf. Yes, I might as well become a demon lord in every sense of the words. That's my answer. No hesitation. If doing that can be my offering to the spirits of everyone we've lost, there's no point in hesitating. That wasn't all. If it meant escaping from the sorrow that felt like it was splitting my heart open, being swallowed up by burning hatred didn't seem so bad. And so, I became a demon lord. Give him your congratulations. The new demon lord has awakened. Great Rimuru, congratulations. Their delighted voices echoed all around me. And if those voices were guiding me home, I opened my eyes and met the gaze of the demon who had advised me to become a demon lord. He seemed to be happily announcing my awakening, but I couldn't figure out why he was taking charge like that. Just as I thought that Soy and the others didn't have to obey him so meekly, I got a good look at my surroundings and was startled. So wait, just as I thought that Soy and the others didn't have to obey him so meekly, I got a good look at my surroundings and was startled. Huh. I'm kind of confused. I guess everyone can sense Diablo's power and that's why they're all scared to like challenge him. And Rimuru, I'm guessing, is just not using his magicule vision to see his power right now since he's just like too much in his sadness and depression but yeah it's interesting to see that if diablo is actually rimuru's right hand man in this alternate world slash dimension everyone gathered all around me had been transformed so much that i hardly recognize them yeah it's like damn i really want to see these looks if it hadn't just happened to those I'd given names to, but Trainee and the others too. Wait, it hadn't just happened to those I'd given names to, but Trainee and the others too. Oh, so it means it's everyone around him. Which is an interesting power-up, I wonder. Is it really a power-up? Or so are they being corrupted? So, like, they're not stronger, but they're just more evil. What the heck happened to you? Alright, let, let me see this. There's Soy's new look. I kind of dig the two horns. Also, everyone is purple and black. Well, I guess Trainee's not. She's just more dark green and black. Which, I mean, you know, suits her color palette. Gabriel got upgraded as well. 
eh, I'd say that looks a lot better for him as well. I like the black coloring on his skin and the purple hair. Diablo is the same. And here's the brand new Rimuru. He's also got two horns. So that's interesting. And Trainee's not really that much different aside from the darker green to like say she's evil. Also, uh, Gabriel's armor, I guess, transformed as well, because I'm pretty sure his armor is usually pretty rough looking and basic. And here it's kind of gold and black metal. With some spikes on the side. Diablo is untouched. It's all thanks to you having evolved, Great Rimuru. We've been granted blessings as well. We were able to evolve like this ourselves. Soi let out a little laugh as he spoke. He'd grown two ominous horns and was dressed all in black. Yeah, what does an evolution gotta do with your clothes changing? Like, <laughs> Rimuru even notices us like, why did your clothes change? That's not a transformation. As members of the Alliance, we've also accepted by you, Rimuru. That's why we've been added to lowest ranks of your true followers. We've been added to lowest ranks of your true followers. I mean, that's kind of interesting. People that are aligned with Rimuru and are his allies that would back him up are automatically added as the lowest level of follower which that's interesting that that automatically happens but also that's so disrespectful it's like it's like damn we would do anything for our friend rimaru who's like another clan army you know nation we would do anything for them and and the first thing that happens is Oh, sorry, you, you guys are given to grunt level in my army. It's like not even give them proper ranks of like a captain or something like that. With her body covered with black ivy and sheer silk, Trainee gave off an aura of evil, completely unlike she'd been before. And her younger sisters were just the same. Now is the time for our revenge. Now that great Rimuru has bestowed this power upon us. Let's show them we can take back Tempest. As he shouted those hot-blooded words, Gabri was brimming with sinister energy that reminded me of the evil dragon. Wait, reminded me of the evil dragon? Is he referring to Trishla? Or is he referring to Veldora? I'm guessing he's saying Trishla because since these are two evil versions of Gabriel, quote unquote, they have both taken a different route of power. Trishla evolved into his version, like by himself without Rimuru's interference. While this one has gotten the same power, I'm guessing, but this time with Rimuru's help. So that's interesting. Every single person gathered here seemed to have undergone the same sort of transformation. Also, I wonder is Isis in this world? It seemed like somehow, when I made up my own mind, it had influence on all my friends as well. <laughs> ah, ha, ha, ha. With the power of Great Rimuru, it ought to be possible to overthrow any situation imaginable. And of course, I will not be sparing with my own assistance. The demon laughed as he spoke. That's right. He was the one who responded to my plea. But I still hadn't given him my thanks. You've already been a big help, so what should I give you as your reward? 
A contract with a demon must be undertaken carefully. I got myself into one pretty recklessly, but you could say the same for him. Since we hadn't agreed on a reward yet, I'd better try and nip the worst case scenario in the bud. But it's true that we hit on a plan of action thanks to him. So, I ought to take his wishes into account as much as possible. That's why I thought as I asked him my question. <laughs> Ahaha! What brings me the greatest joy is being of use to you. But it does seem a shame that I must leave you before much longer, since I have not yet incarnated. When I saw how sad he looked when he said that, it made me chuckle for some reason. So, I made him an offer. In that case, why don't I give you a body to occupy? While we're at it, it must be inconvenient to not have a name either. I think I'll name you Diablo. Yeah, I named the demon Diablo. I have a great taste in names. Yeah, I really do like this alternate history quite a bit. Like, seeing some of these events happen unlike their, like, original story counterparts is really interesting. Because seeing how Diablo is named in this version, and then the sort of, like, transformations that all these characters get, like... Soy and Gabriel really didn't transform in the main version. Like, they got gifts, but they didn't change, like, this much. And Trini, I don't remember her becoming a technically subordinate Arimaru. Like, I'm pretty sure Ramorous came by, like, quickly after. Yeah, I'm just pretty sure that Trainee ne never became a subordinate in the main timeline. Unlike this one. Even I have to admit, it's pretty awful. But, you know, he seems so moved by it all. I couldn't help thinking he might make a great ally for us going forward. Also, I was really confused with this line. Even I have to admit, it's pretty awful. Like this line, I didn't know what he was referring to, but he was talking about the name of naming him Diablo. Which... <laughs> which is funny. And so, having added Diablo to our ranks, we launched our attack on the human community. We would shower blessings on those who extended their hands, and rain punishments on those who bared their fangs at us. There would be no need for mercy. After all, we had already lost so much that was precious to us. We recaptured Tempest with unstoppable force, and then it was time to fully establish myself as a rising demon lord. The Demon Lord Clayman and his ilk were no longer our enemies. In addition to my trusted companions, I had the Black Wolf Ranga faithfully at my feet. And at my side, the rampaging Storm Dragon Veldora had been restored and taken a human form. The humans were in a bind, regretting ever raising their hands against our nation of monsters. But it was far too late. Blood and fire, and a tragedy that spread to engulf the entire world. I never want to feel re such a regret ever again. Also, this image just goes so hard. 
I'm guessing this Rimuru somehow corrupted Veldora, or at least restored him back into his old self. Because he probably saw all this misery and anger from Rimuru that it probably made it him want to do revenge. And plus, like, who knows what happens inside of Rimuru's stomach whenever you're inside. You could just be in there and just the energy that Rimuru, like, provides while you're inside could corrupt you. But I'm guessing Ranga for three years, Hidden Shadows? Like, it's weird on how he survives. I would imagine, like, after Rimuru died, he would have went back to Tempest as well. But they literally didn't mention him. Hold on, let, let me go a little back. I had the Black Wolf Ranga faithfully at my feet. No, so means it is Ranga. For a second, I was like, maybe this is a different wolf. But no, it is Ranga. He just somehow survived. Rimuru didn't mention him just until now. I steeled myself to commit as many atrocities as necessary if it would protect this paradise for me and mine. And as a result, I didn't have a single regret, even as I came to be called the strongest and most evil demon lord of all. So wait. Damn, this is like the worst timeline ever. Like, not only did Rimuru lose his purity and innocence, he lost so many people that we kind of love in the series. But he became so bad, he became the strongest and most evil demon lord. So does that mean he beat Gi and Milam? And somehow got stronger than them? Because I can imagine that this Rimuru is probably just eating tons of people, always making himself stronger. Like for this Rimuru, you would have to be preemptive and stop him. Because as long as he's doing evil deeds and killing people, he's eventually going to surpass you. So with Gi and Milam being firmly at the top for hundreds if not thousands of years, this Rimuru was destroying nations and kingdoms alike, just all getting stronger under the noses of the top demon lords, until finally he like starts attacking the weak demon lords, and then boom, working his way up until he made up to Gi and Milam, and some of the other top tier demon lords. And thus, an age of chaos was born. Yep, this image goes pretty hard. Like, Jesus. The whiplash I got from seeing the worst timeline to now being back into this regular timeline. Alright, well, I think I'll call it there. I'll cover the rest of the stories later. I think I just want to put out the relevant one for the event for the evil Rimaru. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'll probably make the next story parts its own video when I get to that. But yeah, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed Slime Isekai Memories. If you guys did, please make sure to follow me on all my social medias, like my Twitter, my Twitch, my YouTube, my DLive, my TikTok, my Kick, my Rumble, Odyssey, and Daily Motion. Make sure to like and comment on everything. And even join my Discord. There you can stay up to date with everything I choose to do, whether it's my streams, videos, or anything else. But yeah, I hope to see you guys next time. Bye.